What's going on guys, Michael from GPRisers.com and today we took all of our full hash rate 3080s out of our Omega frame because we are putting it into an R8 so that we're better able to isolate the heat. So if you guys have been following along, we have been filling up our R8 rack here. We are on the fourth to last one. Um, I have been kind of holding off on this one in particular because I had to repad two Founders Editions. We actually repadded one of them a while ago. We did a video on the repad and everything like that. Uh, we had some great results with our 20 watt pads, so we went ahead and repadded our other Founder Edition, and we had six on our Omega frame uh, right over there. So I was actually going to repad a couple of the other cards, but there was really only one thermal throttling, and that was this Asus Tough. Um, so I am going to repad that. I just didn't want to hold the build off any longer. I wanted to go ahead and get these isolated over there. Um, so I am go going to actually just put this into the R8 and see how it fares. I think it'll actually be okay. Um, I, of course, if it's thermal throttling in an open air frame, it's likely going to have issues in this one. But this card was actually closest to our 3090 rig right over here. The ASUS Tough was sitting right here on the bottom, so it, you know heat was kind of trapped there, and it was sitting right next to our 3090s, uh, which is our hottest rig in here, even though there's only five. So um, yeah, it is probably still going to thermal throttle, but I kind of decided I'm going to get all of them in here first into the R8, and then we can go ahead and see you know which ones are problematic. And once we get everything in order here, we can go ahead and start repadding. I knew that the Founders Editions were going to need a repad right off the bat, so I went ahead and did that. Um, if you've been following the 3070 Ti builds, uh, this is our Zotac 3070 Ti. None of those cards are thermal throttling in there. However, the one next to it is a uh, our first 3070 Ti build, or I should say our first 3070 Ti build in an R8. And uh, all the MSIs in there are like hitting 110 Celsius, if you saw the last video um, on the memory temperature. So all of those have to be repadded. And I am likely going to do that after I get this 3081 in here. Um, there's not really a sense of urgency uh, for you know any other build currently right now. I did have a 3080 just sitting. I did have this 3080 on our test bench. So uh, they kind of weren't really, they were kind of sitting idle. So I wanted to get them up and mining. However, after this build, we don't really have any cards that are offline. It's more so just organization, you know, like moving uh, this over there. Actually, we do have uh, six 3070 Ti's that are offline. We have the gigabytes here and the three Zotax there. This is actually going to be combined here. I mentioned that in the last video, so. So I guess that would be uh, more of a priority, but I am not going to do that until I get the 3090s put into our server rack because the 3090s are eating up a whole lot of power on one of these PDUs. And uh, actually this PDU I'm going to be putting on the server rack as well. So there will be a total of three 30 amp PDUs on the server rack. And before I do any more load uh, on this one, actually all of these are going to be connected to this one. I'm not sure how that's going to work yet. Um, we kind of have to see the wattage pull. Um, I'm not exactly sure what these 6600 XT rigs are pulling in 6600s. I can ballpark um, you know, the cards and everything like that, but until we get them hooked up to the PDU, um, I don't really want to you know, try to overload anything right now. And we have been wanting to purchase more cards. Um, you know, we do have an opportunity to purchase about 11 3070s. Um, and also we want to expand a little bit more on, onto the uh, 6700 XTs. Those are becoming more available. And as much as I want to get those cards in, uh, we just don't currently have a place for them. So I wanted to get all of this done. I guess you could say trying to get our house in order here before we do any kind of expansion. I kind of want everything, you know, uh, fluid and in motion. Um, you know, once this rack is filled and that's all going, then I can start, you know, kind of planning future builds and everything like that. But I do need to consolidate everything until we do that. And in the front, we do have a build that is 33090 for the win. Uh, three editions from EVGA, just like this card right here. So we have the five 3090s here, and we are going to be putting the three other EVGAs into an R8. So once we get everything consolidated and we can figure out you know, where we can grow from here, um, then we are going to be expanding and purchasing more cards. But having this heat wall and everything kind of going through the back there, you can kind of see uh, you know, how this goes in the back right here. We have that framed out. Um, you know, this is drastically reducing the temperature in here. It is ripping all the AC out here, and you know, I am going to be turning the AC off eventually and keep the fan running in the AC, so it is cycling air and pulling air in. However, just having these so far is drastically reducing the temperature in here, and we are kind of curving the end of summer, so I am optimistic about, you know, when winter comes in Florida, even though it's 
still going to be in the 70s probably even on good days um, you know and that's probably only for two months also uh, but we are curving that you know time here in florida where summer is just brutal i think the last two weeks have probably been the hottest but it looks like we are coming down from that and hopefully september will be good so since i'm already having temperatures drop from this i am uh, pretty optimistic about you know how winter is going to be the next six seven months and also you know we had this 3080 rig in an open frame here and now all of this you know heat is getting directed out there so that's going to even help more and more and as we do these and convert these into heat isolation it is uh, just going to really help out in here but of course as i've said in the other videos uh you know keeping 6600 xts in open air is just fine um, you know if we actually do run low on uh you know space here and we have to you know do something with the servers over there we actually have two 6700 xt r8s over there um, and the 6700 uh, XTs with R mode and everything like that are very low wattage cards. So I might end up putting those on Omega frames, much like this one over here. Um, you know, having 12 of these that are low wattage like that are not gonna generate a lot of heat. Um, so I might reserve uh, some of the space over here in the R8s for higher wattage cards, uh, but we'll have to see. You know, we can move it around and everything like that, but I do wanna get at least 10 of these R8s up and running so that we have as much hot air flowing out of here as possible. But yeah, guys, that said, let me go ahead, throw all these in there. Uh, I have the MSI Ventus here, 3080, the Asus Tough, two founders, two for the Win 3s, a MSI Gaming Trio X, I think, or Z, um, and a Gigabyte Vision. Now, the Gigabyte Vision is running uh, kind of hot. It's not thermal throttling. I did repad this card like two years ago. I don't, whenever these cards came out, I was lucky enough to get one, and I did repad that. So this MSI uh, Ventus right here, uh, I got right at release, or maybe a month after it released. Um, this card has stock pads, like I said, everything like that, and this card runs so cold. Like the VRAM runs cold, it's in like the 80s, even compared to the Further Wind 3s, this thing runs so cold, I, I don't know why. So I'm not gonna mess with this one, it's like a golden egg for me. Um, the asus tough here i probably will have to repad um, and i'm gonna go ahead and see uh, you know how these cards fare in the server case and kind of reassess once again you know once this is filled out so i'm gonna stop rambling let me go ahead and throw all these into the r8 right now all right we're back guys i got all of them in here all of the 3080 these are all full hash rates i'm not sure if i mentioned that before i did put the further winds over here i put the founders here the gigabyte msi um, the other Oh, this is the ASUS Tough and the other MSI here. So let me go ahead and get HiveOS installed on our SSD right here, and we'll be able to get it up into our rack right there. And I will boot it up, get everything situated, then uh, we'll come back and I'll talk to you guys once it's up and going and drop a screenshot of the overclocks and how it's running and everything like that. So I don't want to beat around the bush. Let me go ahead and get that done, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. I do have the RTX 3080 full hash rate rig right here, and it's running. Now, I did have a couple problems with the overclocks uh, on minor stat which is what the six other cards were on um, yeah I had I think I had the overclocks on like 2400 uh, 2200 somewhere around that but uh, one of the founders editions uh, at 2200 on the memory would just fail and it would kind of you know freeze up the whole rig and reboot and everything like that so I went ahead and made some changes I changed the overclocks on the one MSI and the founders edition that was having an issue and I set the other uh, overclocks to the other six cards at their normal overclocks and everything seems to be working just fine so I think maybe one of the founders editions just has a bad silicon lottery in it. but I will post a screenshot right here on the screen for you guys uh, to show you guys the overclocks that I'm using um, as you guys could probably see the MSI and ASUS Tough are uh, having some thermal issues. They are on and off of thermal throttling. I did bump the fans to 100% and it seems to be helping. Um, right now in the bunker, this is the hottest time. So, um, you know, I am hopeful that it will cool down, but I am going to repad that ASUS Tough and also the MSI that's in there. But that's gonna be everything, guys. I think the next one that I'm going to be doing, it will be the 3090 rig. Uh, that's gonna require a good amount of power, like I said earlier in the video. So I will have to move some of this stuff around. Um, you know, we have a lot of room on this PDU left and a lot of room on that PDU. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I think once I disconnect this 3090 rig right here, we will be fine. But it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of test all that different stuff out. But, uh, but yeah, that's going to be the next video, guys. We'll be on the 3090s. I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of the day, and we'll see you guys next time.